Amazon Web Services has revolutionized how companies deploy and manage applications by offering flexible cloud solutions. And in today's scenario, AWS jobs are totally in demand. So for the same purpose, we have brought a new video for you to upskill yourself. The topic for today is Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, which provides scalable computing power to run your applications in the cloud. But what exactly is EC2 and how does it work? In this tutorial, we will break down the concept of EC2, its component, and how you can launch your very first EC2 instance. But before that, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got Cloud Architects Master Program. So in this course, you're gonna learn about AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. With our Cloud Architect course, you can build expertise in AWS, Microsoft Azure, GCP, and also you are going to get exam voucher for this. You'll also get access to official AWS authored self-learning content and many more things. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's start with what is AWS EC2. In simple terms, AWS EC2 is a web service that lets you run machines, also known as instances, to run your applications. Think of it as a renting powerful computer or server that you don't need to own or manage physically. You can choose the specification of machine like its processor, memory and storage based on your requirements and AWS takes care of all the maintenance, upgrades and physical infrastructure behind the scenes. Before the cloud, if you wanted to run a web application or store data, you needed to buy physical servers. These servers took up space, required a lot of resources to manage and had a fixed processing power. EC2 makes all that obsolete, providing scalable computing power at a fraction of a cost. Now, let us try to understand what is instance. Now, in the context of EC2, an instance refers to a virtual machine that runs on the AWS infrastructure. When you launch an EC2 instance, you are essentially spinning up a virtual server that can run software, handle data, and power applications just like physical server. Each instance can run an operating system such as Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, and perform tasks like hosting a website, running a database, or supporting a web application. These instances have various configurations based on the amount of CPU, memory, or storage they provide which is ideal for different use cases. Now, let us talk about what are the differences between instance and service. One point of confusion for beginners is understanding the difference between an EC2 service and an instance. So here's a simple way to think about it. Think of it EC2 service as an entire platform or offering provided by AWS, which gives you access to all the resources tools and capabilities needed to create and manage virtual machines or instances. If we talk about instance, an instance is an actual virtual machine that lets you create using your EC2 service. So EC2 is a tool and instance is the object you create with it. It's like going to car a rental company like EC2 and renting a car instance. The company EC2 provides the vehicle you need to select on that it fits your needs, which is basically the instance. Now, you would be wondering why to choose AWS. So why should you use EC2 over traditional physical servers? The answer lies in the flexibility and cost effectiveness. In traditional computing, companies had to buy and maintain physical hardware. Scaling up or down meant by buying new servers and adding more resources manually. This could be expensive and time consuming. With EC2, you can scale up or down instantly. If you need more computing power, you can add more instances or switch to a higher performance instance type. If you need less, you can scale down just as easily. Now, if I talk about the next reason, that is pay only for what you use. So EC2 charges based on the amount of compute resources you use. You don't have to worry about an ideal servers paying for unused capacity. Think of it as like pay as you go model which makes EC2 highly cost effective, especially for startups or small businesses. Next is, it also eliminates hardware management. AWS handles the hardware, so you don't need to worry about the server maintenance, replacements, or upgrades. Now, let us discuss about EC2 instance type, choosing the right fit. So, if I talk about AWS, it offers wide variety of EC2 instance types. 
to cater to different use cases. Whether you are hosting a small website or running high performance application, there's an instance type suited for your needs. So here are some of the common instance type. The first one is general purpose instances. These are balanced instances and that offer a mix of CPU, memory and network performance. They are suitable for most applications such as web server, small databases. Compute optimized instances. These instances provide more CPU power, making them ideal for workloads that require heavy computation like scientific simulations or video rendering. Next one is memory optimized instances. If your application needs large amounts of RAM, then these instances are a good fit. They are perfect for memory intensive tasks like in-memory caches or large scale data processing. Now, let us discuss about the storage optimized instances. These instances provide high input output performance for applications that require large amount of fast storage such as big data analytics and data warehousing. When choosing an instance, consider factors like CPU requirements, memory and storage needs. AWS offers detailed specifications for each instance type, making it easy to find the right one. Now, let us discuss about bustable performance instances or low cost flexibility and how these are incorporated. So if I talk about bustable performance instances such as T2 series, which are designed for workloads that don't require constant high performance, but occasionally needs bursts of power. These instances are cost effective because they only use CPU power when necessary. When idle, they accumulate CPU credits that can be used when a spike in demand occurs. For example, a website that typically receives a small number of visitors but occasionally experience traffic spikes during promotions can benefit from a burstable instance. This saves money while ensuring the website performs well when the traffic increases. Next, we have cluster networking instances or high-speed communication. Cluster networking instances are a special type of EC2 instance that are designed for workloads that require high-speed communication between multiple instances. This feature is particularly useful for the applications like high-performance computing or big data analysis, where data needs to move quickly between instances. Imagine running a large machine learning model on multiple EC2 instances. Using cluster networking, it ensures that these instances can communicate with each other without delays, making the entire process more efficient and faster. The next one that we have all over here are dedicated instances for increased isolation. If I talk about dedicated instances, then these are the EC2 instances that run on hardware physically isolated from other AWS customers. This means that no other customers' virtual machines are running on the same physical server as your instance providing additional security and compliance for sensitive workloads. Dedicated instances are a great choice for businesses and industries like healthcare, finance, that needs to meet strict compliance requirements for data privacy and security. So these were some of the instances of EC2. Now, let us move ahead and try to understand how you can launch an EC2 instance. So guys, let's move ahead and try to understand how you can launch an EC2 instance. So the first step is you have to log into your AWS Management Console. So go to the AWS Management Console and navigate to the EC2 dashboard. So you can type all over here, AWS Management Console, login, and just right click all over here. And you could see a sign in button all over here. Just click on sign in and you'd be directed to your AWS Management Console. So you can see I have already logged in, so I'm at that page. Now, after that, all over here, you can see there are certain services. So now for our today's session, we'll be using the EC2 instance. So click all over here. Now, so after this, what do you have to do guys? You have to click on launch instance. So after right clicking all over here, then you have to configure your instance name. Like you can say name and tags. You can say, for example, it has written my web server or suppose you are working onto a job portal application. So say job portal. Okay. Now, next you have to select an application image, which is an Amazon machine image or AMI. So it says that AMI is basically a template that contains software configuration, like what kind of operating system you want to use. So you can see all over here, it has Amazon Linux, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, SUSE Linux and Debian. So you can select all over here, Amazon Linux. Now, 
so i am choosing the free tier version all over here so if you are a beginner if you want to learn it go for a free tier and the pricing for this is it's free completely just only one dollar will be hold back from your credit card details so that's one of the way so just click on this and you can see also the description is also written all over here and it says amazon linux 2023 is a modern general purpose linux based operating system so you have this five years long term support now the architecture wise it's 64 bit boot mode is uefi preferred now they it has its own emi id and it has its own username which is ac2 slash user now i'm using t3.micro okay now next is you have to select the key pair login so all over here you can proceed with the default key pair value or you can click on create a new key pair so you can see all over here the key pair name okay so inside the key pair name label you can just enter my ec2 key and i want to go for rsa or ad25519 so i would prefer like ad25519 algorithm and the format you can use for open SHS if you want to use it. So use .pm file and just click on create key pair. So your key pair will be you know downloaded all over here. And from here you can just select. Okay. So this is your key pair .pm file all over here. So you know all your details are mentioned on this key pair file. Now this is one of the thing and you have selected. So now this is your key pair login now let us go to the network settings so you have to select the vpc all over here okay so either what you can do you can see all over here that you have the subnet preference okay you have auto assign public ip okay if you want to create any security group like for firewall purposes you know so basically these will be the set of rules that are going to control your traffic instance uh, these rule is going to allow you, you know, only specific traffic to reach your instance. So these are very important security configuration. So you will always select, you know, SSH traffic. So just right click all over here. And uh, just uh, for default purposes, we'll be using this. Now, after uh, going from here, so you can see this is your configure storage. So it has, you know, for uh, root, it says one cross eight GIB and GP3. This is a root volume and but this is not encrypted okay so for security purposes i would say in production environments this should be encrypted okay and uh, if you want to add a new volume just click all over here and you know just remove it you can also click on advanced just right click on advanced and uh, you can see all over here this in this free tire you know this something is written that in your free tier it includes 750 hours of t2 micro or t3 micro regions and um, it is also in certain regions t2 dot micro is unavailable in and the instance uses on free tier ami per month is also mentioned 750 hours of public ipv4 address usage of month 30 gib of eba storage 2 million ios input output and uh, 1 gb of snapshots and 100 gb bandwidth to the internet so this is something that is coming uh, with your ac2 instance so these are very important thing okay just uh, because every uh, based on your uh, what kind of payment model you are going because as i have already told you earlier that uh, aws ec2 you know goes with the you know pay as you go model okay now after doing all these configuration since we are done with our configuration now click on launch instance so you can see all over here it has started you know launching the instance now you can see we have successfully launched our instance and you can just click all over here and you'll be directed to your instance dashboard so you can see job portal this is your instance id this instance state is running the type is t3 micro and right now it is initializing if you want to select an alarm status you can select this and now let us look at the availability zone so for this it is north 1b you have public ipv4 dns address okay now these ips we have not given monitoring is disabled for this okay security group name launch wizard one is there so your key name is mentioned your launch time is mentioned and the platform that we have selected for this is linux okay this is not managed 
Okay. So these are some of the configuration. I won't say this is a perfect configuration for a production environment, but for a beginner, these things are pretty much fine to understand how you can launch EC2 instance. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video on AWS EC2. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.